he not detected? How clever is that? Right, so what can we do to stop thieving scums from nicking our fiestas? So not a single day goes by when I don't read on Facebook about a Fiesta ST being stolen. It's a common problem with all um, modern cars. Uh, so what can you do to stop it happening? Well, obviously you've got the usual things people recommend. They say get a disc lock um, for the steering wheel, which is, is a good investment. OBD relocation and things like that. But even when you do the OBD thing, you've still got people stealing... Uh, cars, they go around the house with these scanners and things. I don't understand how it works, but they scan in your house, boost the signal, and then your key fob is signal is amplified, and they don't even need the fob to steal the car. So, just going back last week, um, a subscriber to the channel, Dave Porter, sent me a, a message, and he said that um, he'd experimented with a smint um, packet. And these are steel, I assume it's stainless steel. And he put the key fob on this and he said it blocked the signal. So he suggested I made a video on doing it. So that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to throw some more things into the mix other than just a little smint box. So other than the smint, we have got a bistro tin, a coffee tin, and a Jean-Paul Gaultier perfume box and some tin foil because I heard that works but realistically these are your best options because you say that will only fit a fob whereas you can put your bunch of keys in these so we're going to get into the test now and see do they block the signal from your key fob to the car so let's see what happens I've, lo I've lost my fob oh here it is. Hey, one thing worth mentioning while we're here is get yourself a little handbrake hole filler from DC3D Designs because if you have your fob like that and you were to go there, it can go straight down the handbrake hole. Just a little tip for you. Uh, we did a video on that just a couple of weeks ago and done a giveaway. Actually, if you like my videos, please subscribe right now if you haven't subscribed already and hit the thumbs up button i would absolutely appreciate that and just to let you know i've got some good modification plans coming up for this car we go on stage two very soon i've got some parts on order and we go into a dyno day um, in a couple of weeks so um hopefully plenty of good stuff right so let's get into the video then i'm now going to got the fob here i'll stick it there so we can do the usual you know what happens now i I haven't got the ST3, so I haven't got keyless entry, so I can only test the activation while in the car. So, push the button, we can see that um, ignition comes on, as it should do. So, the first thing we'll experiment with then is the cement box. So, if we put the fob in there, close them up. Off. Oh, it's a tighter fit ha. So we'll chuck chuck that there. Now let's try. Okay, so it's recognized. It hasn't actually blocked the signal. So not the most successful. What Dave did say was with his keyless entry that it would block the signal until you go really close to the car so it wouldn't work at normal distance so it, it has some effect I'm gonna try again let's put put it back here no so maybe effective in the house at a bit of a distance but hasn't actually killed the signal while we're inside the car but still good shout thanks for recommending it so what we will do then now we will start with the coffee tin because that's got a plastic lid so ah, I forgot to clean out the leftover coffee let's tip it out Yeah, still some residue in there. Right, okay, so 
key fob in the coffee tin. Put the lid on. I don't know if that'll make any difference. And we will put that there, so. Nothing. Key not detected. How clever is that? So the coffee tin has worked. Right, let's click OK. Try again. Holding it down. No? Absolutely nothing. Coffee tin is a, 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 a success. Easy for you to see. Right. Oh, it's jammed in. Can you believe it? I tell you what, luckily, one of the kids have left a nice little fork in here. <laughs> How perfect is that? Right. This fob's going to be smelling the coffee. Wow. I should have washed. I should have put some thought into this before I done it. Right, so the next thing we're going to try then is the... Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now I'm going to try all of these because you don't know what types of tins you're going to have in the house. These are magnetic. I did put a magnet on us. They're not aluminium. So probably a stainless steel. So let's try the Jean-Paul Gaultier. I'm going to try it with the lid off first. Oh. It has recognised that. Switch it back off. Let's try it with the lid on. So Jean Paul is closed up. Lid on. No recognizer. Actually, that's really impressive. I'm quite impressed with this. So lid on. Now you can imagine you could get a bunch of keys in there when you're in the house. So let's move on to the bistro tin, which is a bigger tin and could probably handle a couple of bunches of keys. So you could put your spares and and everything in there. So this is a bigger one. Let's see if we get a full full bunch in there. A couple of full bunches. Let's try you with try with a lid off. Right, so he recognises it with the lid off, which is fair enough. Switching back off. Lid on. Let's try him again. Oh. It's a bit peculiar. So it's worked. That's funny, that is. What is the difference between some of these tins that make some work and some not? It must be to do with the metal. Now, I put a magnet on them all. And they were lightly magnetic, so I assume they're all stainless. Um, I'm going to give that a minute, just in case it needs to sort of reset and lose the signal from in the car. So I'm going to put it back in. Let's give it 20, 30 seconds, and then we'll start again. See if that makes a difference. No, how strange is that? So it does look like that not all steel tins block the signal. So it's definitely worth experimenting with a few tins, but the good thing about this is it's free. You're going to have some of these tins around the house. So you know the coffee tin has worked out well. I wonder if it's the shape. Square shape or something, and whereas these are round. Excuse the mess in the car, the wife doesn't clean it very often. Right, so let's get... Let's get a fob back out of that one. So, the bistro. Was it gravy? That's not all gravy. That's not working. So, the last thing left to try is the tin foil. So, I'm going to get myself a little bit of tin foil, wrap the key in that, and see if, see if that blocks the signal. We just um, stick it on there. If I don't cut any foil off, I can put it back on the roll and the wife can use it for cooking the chicken then. So let's try that. He's wrapped up a little bit. 
put him on a chair, but it's a slippery slope. Let's give him a try. No, key not detected. So tin foil works. That's really interesting though. Because I do often think of that. What if he's zapping from in the house and then boosting your, your signal and then heading off with your car? So obviously disc lock is a good deterrent. And if you're going to tow it away in a trailer, there's not much you can do. So I quite enjoyed doing that experiment. Hopefully you've enjoyed it too. And if you haven't thumbed up the video, please do it now. And please like, share, subscribe. And stay tuned because I do love modifying my cars and driving them on track. And there's going to be a lot more of that coming soon. So thank you very much. I will see you on the next one. Bye.